Fecal microbiota transplant, or FMT, is a medical procedure where you take a healthy person's stool, aka shit, and inject it into an unhealthy person's bowels to replenish good bacteria and other microorganisms necessary for proper gut function. In the past two decades, fecal transplants have gone from a fringe experimental practice to an FDA-approved treatment for the deadly bacterial infection Clostridium difficile, or C. diff, which it has proven 90 to 95 percent effective at curing. So we're getting close to the end here. And numerous clinical trials are currently underway to see if fecal transplants can be used to treat a wider array of intestinal diseases, as well as conditions affecting the liver, the immune system, even moods all of which has exponentially increased the medical community's demand for good shit. So in order to have fecal transplants, obviously you need feces. In the earliest forms of the procedure, people would just kind of like pick their friends with really healthy bowels and take that feces to the hospital, and the hospital would divvy it up and put them in them. There's now a uh, stool bank called Open Biome in Boston, which accepts donors, gives them, I believe, like 40 bucks or so, and uh, screens them for anything that could be wrong with their stool. So the donors they do have are super healthy, like Joe, who is showing up here at 7 in the morning, having run from his house to drink coffee. Howdy. The key part to sort of our business model is really that, you know, the old way of doing FMT was you invest a lot of time and effort into finding a good donor. You treat one patient and then you never use that information again. In our case, the view is, hey, you know, people poop every day. We can get many, many samples and treat many, many patients from a single donor. It's like having a prize fighter or something. Or yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> In terms of donors, all the foot traffic this morning was all like young and male. Uh, they're definitely young. Uh, I think that they're like two-thirds male or something like that. Um, that's kind of the typical donor. I was gonna ask if there was any difference gender-wise between like if stool varied from male to Yeah, stool size. We looked at that a while ago. I don't think we saw a difference because I was like very interested in that. I seem to remember there was a correlation between like body mass, like bigger people take bigger shits, but I think it's pretty pretty varied. They're, they're small guys that uh, have very generous samples. So. Right, okay, yeah, you were telling me about someone who was the like top donor. Yeah, yeah, we had this guy who used to deliver like half kilo samples like every day. Um, it was like consistently every day. And it's like, you know, he probably produced as much as like, uh, you know, three or four normal donors. So <laughs> I don't know what that guy ate, but uh, maybe a lot of fiber or a something. A lot of something. Yeah. Before open biome stool donors can start making $40 a squat, they must undergo a rigorous screening process that involves testing their stool for any bloodborne pathogens like HIV or hepatitis, as well as a 179 question survey about their dietary health, medical history, and general behavior. In hopes of making a little mad money for my stay in Massachusetts, I submitted a sample of my own. Come on in. Thanks. All right, so we're gonna open this guy up. Oh, apologies for the smell. Yeah, well, that's just the name of the game. So. Yeah. And it dissipates. It's always the worst in the beginning, and then it, it, it disappears. Okay. We're going to take this out of the biosafety cabinet and bring it over to our homogenizing machine. This kind of seals everything from entering the bag as well as keeping it in there, right? OK. <laughs> There's something really perverse about this. I'm, I just feel bad. This is our livelihood. So okay. kind of hang the bag in the top here, mm -hmm. close this. And then it's gonna go for two minutes, 30 seconds. So okay, it's just your gonna... samples are pretty intermediate size. Our average is about 150. Um, our biggest is somewhere over 600. What? <laughs> it's crazy, right? It really seems like this is a machine that is doing the job a single person used to do. Technically, you probably could break it up by hand. This is obviously a much better way. We will pull this out. You can see this is beautifully broken up. You had a great sample. Thanks. So sometimes there will still be some kind of pieces still intact. We'll want to run it a second time, but yours seem to homogenize perfectly, so this is good to go. Okay. While the stool technician had very nice things to say about my sample, there's only so much you can tell about a person's crap from smooshing it up and looking at it. To supplement the physical screening, I'll now be given a long and rigorous interview about my lifestyle and general health. Thanks for coming in. What we normally do is go through a clinical uh, assessment, and you've had the stool test, which will run through some results, and that's how we assess for donors uh, to come on board. 
So firstly, uh, do you experience any regular stomach issues at all? Any constipation or diarrhea or abdominal pain at all? A little bit of constipation, usually travel related and then occasional diarrhea. In the last 12 months, did you travel outside the US at all? Yes. Uh, whereabouts? Mexico. Mexico. And how long were you there for? A week. A week. And can I ask uh, what you did in Mexico? Harvested opium poppies. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> um, was that part of the... We also harvested weed, but um, it, okay. was, it was the point was to go there and harvest opium poppies. Great. And I think that's all the questions we'll ask for today. Is there anything that has disqualified me off the bat? So uh, I think the travel um, hanging out in, in uh, poppy fields. Yep. Sorry, I can't donate. Uh, that's all right, Tom. <laughs> wow. So three questions in and I'm already out of the running. It's unclear how harvesting opium may have compromised my shit. But Open Biome has an incentive to be cautious, given how little is currently understood about feces and how it interacts with the digestive system of a foreign body. As more research is done into FMT, however, science will hopefully make donating stool as safe and straightforward as giving blood, as well as expand its applications beyond C. diff. We're kind of in this lucky position where we already know that this works really well for this infection. We're sort of just making that available. We didn't sort of discover and invent FMT is a treatment for C. diff. Yeah, my understanding is like the, the whole reason you guys started up is because the supply for these operations was just like virtually non-existent. You would have to source your own stool and yeah. you wanted to have a fecal transplant performed. Have, have you guys like basically met the demand for people doing fecal transplants at this point or is there still like a big gap there? We're treating around 800 patients a month now and we're in 550 hospitals in every state in six countries. So, and then we have 13 active uh, clinical studies that are going on to investigate sort of new applications for FMT. And ultimately, I actually think that work could be much more impactful than even the work we're doing in C. diff because, you know, there are 700,000 ulcerative colitis patients a year in the United States and like, they are very poorly served by conventional medical therapies. What's interesting is in the last decade or so, we've started to understand sort of the complexity and importance of uh, the human microbiome, the sort of 100 trillion bacteria that live inside of you. But if it turns out that, you know, by actually changing your gut, you can, you can change the, the person's health, that would be really exciting.